Podcast. Good afternoon and welcome to another episode of InvestorIdeas.com Podcast. In today's episode, we look at a few early announcements from National Access Cannabis Corporation trading on the TSX Venture as Meta, FSD Pharma Incorporated trading on the CSE as Huge, and the OTCQB as FSDDF, Eurolife Brands Incorporated trading on the CSE as Euro and the OTC as CANVF, as well as Consortium Incorporated trading on the CSE as TIUM-U and the OTCQB as CNTMF, and Cureleaf Holdings Incorporated trading on the CSE as Cura and the OTCQX as CURLF. But before getting into that, in recent news, the federal government has noticeably become overwhelmed with the large amount of cannabis research applications that have been steadily coming in since last October with legalization. So as of last month, there were over 251 applicants waiting in the queue for approval and scientists are becoming increasingly irritated with the stagnancy of the process, which is currently subject to waits lasting months at a time. It's incredibly slow, much slower than it used to be. University of Lethbridge print geneticist Igor Kolovich told Science Magazine on October 17, 2018 is when things slowed down tremendously. Federal legalization produced an instant flood of cannabis research applications for Health Canada, which they are attempting to manage on top of those applications for cultivation, processing, retail, and other aspects of the strictly regulated industry that require the federal agency's approval. Health Minister Jeanette Papitas-Taylor announced in May that it's investing its own research products relating to the drug, saying that we are investing in research to provide the evidence needed to maintain policies for cannabis use that protect the health and safety of Canadians. So this is a pretty big example of the problems with federal legal systems when they're rolling out. No matter where that's going to be in the world in the future, uh, I'm sure the Canadian model is going to be looked at very closely. As far as what problem do you have when you're trying to reach a federal scale of enforcement for this drug, as well as what some of the problems you're going to have with one agency running multiple aspects as far as enforcement and regulatory uh, needs. So Health Canada right now has to deal with the research, the cultivation, the retail, uh, pretty much everything to do with this cannabis industry. And they're even as well having to pay attention to some things that are even more ancillary to the industry and on the outskirts of it in case anyone is touching the plant at any level. Uh, And then there's also the separation between hemp and high THC cannabis plants. So it's a lot for them to be dealing with. And one thing that has become apparent from the industry is that a lot of these people in this health Canada positions are strictly unprepared for a lot of the a, the amount of applications they're going to be dealing with, but also the technical aspects of all of it. You have to think this is pretty much, for many of them, either completely learning a new industry or at least having to brush up on a lot of the uh, regulatory wording and a lot of the actual uh, differences that are going on between the country. So it is going to be something that we'll see what happens with that over the next coming years, uh, whether Health Canada either has their own agency increase Uh, to deal with a lot of this and maybe they focus on the research themselves but it's an interesting aspect because one of the biggest things for the industry right now is the lack of data as it were a lot of people are saying we need more data for the industry but then unfortunately a lot of these research applications aren't actually going through which would provide us with the data which the industry is again in demand of right now so we'll see where this ends up at some point whether they either make this an easier application for the science and research departments or whether they move that to a separate division or if they create their own division that'll be uh, up for debate over the next coming years on based on how health canada is able to deal with again this overwhelming demand of applications from all sides of the industry so getting into announcements today natural access cannabis corporation which is canada's largest cannabis retailer provided investors with a corporate and retail sales update so the company is successfully executing on its growth strategy and has achieved over 50 million in retail sales since legalization with cumulative gross margin in excess of 31 percent and the company is targeting to have 40 operating stores by the end of the calendar year of 2019. natural access cannabis is rapidly growing its store count and revenue said mark gulliger ceo of nac We've been granted 10 licenses in Alberta since the ending of the moratorium on May 31st. We expect positive movement with our license applications in BC. We now have 30 stores open with another five stores licensed and in development. And we expect continued revenue momentum as we roll out improved and streamlined store designs to enhance consumer experiences. With the recent filing of our final base shelf prospectus to provide us with flexible access to capital, we're confident in our ability to execute on strategic growth initiatives to continue our leadership position in the Canadian cannabis retail. 
So the company has their 35 licensed locations, and the split is 25 New Leaf Cannabis stores in Alberta, 9 Meta Cannabis Supply Co. stores in Manitoba, and 1 Meta Cannabis Supply store in Saskatchewan. So still just in Alberta and Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Like most of the Canadian retail right now, uh, they're in those three provinces. One thing to note is those provinces, as far as population density, pretty limited uh, compared to some of the other provinces. Again, when, especially when you're comparing it to uh, Quebec and Ontario, as well as even in parts of BC, at least in the greater Vancouver area. Um, and again, those areas right now are extremely held back with a lot of the differences in their retail applications and some of the holdbacks that the governments have put in place in each of those provinces. So the companies who are able to really take over those markets uh, in the next coming year or have themselves really established in those areas, not just in the central part of Canada, uh, might have an advantage over the long term. It's still up to debate on how much actual retail sales you're going to see and how much of it's going to remain online. As we've already seen that with the launch of online in BC, for example, lots of people are still ordering that. They're still getting the sales out, even with no real retail access and only a few stores popping up here and then. The sales haven't really decreased that much. So at a certain point, uh, there could be more stores, speaking of which we'll go into the next announcement, that people, especially if they're in the medical cannabis community, might just get the door delivery. There's lots of those, especially in Ontario. Uh, the main thing is, uh, what's it, Pineapple Express delivery. It's one of the main people there that's doing same-day delivery. So we will see this. I mean, we've seen this with most other industries where the retail segment of the world isn't exactly as strong as it used to be. And there could be more focus on online and delivery sales, which similar to a Skip the Dishes or any of those types of companies that have expanded over the coming years, even regarding the restaurant industry. We see that restaurant sales as far as actually in the business versus what's being ordered online is starting to change. Uh, so that could be something that does affect the retail industry in both the Canadian market and then as well, even in the U.S., I'm sure California and Colorado would have more specific data for that on how much percentage is in-store retail versus online and how much infrastructure they have set up for that. So it would be a good thing to pay attention to over the coming months. Speaking of, as I said, the online sales, FSD Pharma announced the launch of its online ordering system for direct fulfillment of medical cannabis orders. So through its wholly owned subsidiary, FB Pharma Incorporated, clients with a prescription from a medical practitioner or a registration number with Health Canada can now place an order online for dried cannabis on fbpharma.com. The launch of a functional online ordering portal to fulfill prescriptions for medical cannabis is a very important milestone for FSD Pharma. Since receipt of our sale and medical purpose license earlier in June, we're now open for registration online to a wide client base and we're pleased that patients have already begun to use our user-friendly website, said Raza Bakari, MD, FSD Executive Co-Chairman and Chief Executive Officer. And I want to personally congratulate the FSD Pharma team in helping the company advance into the important phase. We still have many more successful chapters to write together, concluded Dr. Bakari. Uh, so FSD Pharma, again, focusing on the medical side of things, there's several companies like them that have their own online portals. And again, we'll see how much as even with medical retail outlets, um, there aren't as many as there used to be. A lot of them were shut down through differences with their license or not getting things approved in a certain timely manner. Uh, as well as certain things to do with uh, city bylaws, depending on where they were located. So even for the medical community, there isn't as many locations as there would have been in the past, uh, especially with the more gray market that's existed for a long time. And so now, again, we're looking more at online sales. Uh, lots of other medical companies, both in Canada and the U.S., a big percentage of their sales are through their online portals. It's also an easier way to keep the registration numbers and everything in line and have all your data in one area. So next, looking at Eurolife Brands, who used to be Canvas MedTech, a leading global markets cannabis brand empowering the medical, recreational, and CPG cannabis industry worldwide, who announced that its corporate rebranding and repositioning within the cannabis industry has been completed with the launch of its EurolifeBrands.com company website and corporate refocus. With our, company, with our corporate rebrand complete, we're free to focus all efforts to continuing to grow the Eurolife cannabis brand across Europe and South America with a determination on new opportunities, strategic mergers, and acquisitions to build shareholder value, said Sean Moniz, Chief Executive Officer of Eurolife Brands Incorporated. We expect to quickly become a leader in the burgeoning CPG CBD market across Europe by leveraging our rich repository of unbiased and physician-backed original education content alongside our in-depth consumer data and analytics. Demonstrating the company's commitment to providing accessible cannabis education, its Director of Strategy and Education, Daniel Davidson, 
was recently published in the National Post, arguing for the crucial need for evidence-based cannabis education for cannabis consumers across Canada and the world. With so many cannabis curious consumers confused over what treatments, products, and services available to them, the need for education-driven marketplace has grown exponentially, and your life is poised poised to lead the market with its repository of over 400 physician-backed and educator-approved articles and over 70 courses in its education program. So the EuroLife executive team devoted a significant amount of time over the last quarter quantifying strategic partners across Europe in both the cannabis sector and other industries to determine the organization's realignment and strengthen the brand's presence across the country, continent. In a recent report from the Brightfield Group, a leading market intelligence firm in the legal CBD and cannabis industries estimated that the European CBD market at 318 US dollars million in 2018, with the expectation of booming growth over 400% through 2023. Um, so while the company shifts its European and South American activities towards the CBD market, the anchor of its North American operations will remain with its Canadian and US focused digital cannabis education resources, canvas.me and canvas.pet. Uh, as well, they've added more experts to their veterinarian canvas.pet platform, as well as two new culinary focused appointments to its cannabis sciences advisory board. And you can read that more in the detailed article. Uh, and there's also links attached to find out more information. So canvas.me is now changed to your life brands officially. And again, focusing more on the European CBD market as many companies are right now. And there's a lot of data that supports that there's gonna be massive growth in the European CBD industry over the next coming years, as well as even in the Latin American industry. So the fact that there are Europe and Latin America, that is, or South America, that is where CBD is expected to boom uh, pretty significantly. And where as well, they're allowing for a lot more companies to enter into those spaces and to focus on that. And as well where the education is severely needed one thing to note is that uh, canvas is not the only educational platform there's lots of companies that are focusing on how to basically better educate the consumer on which products to use and where to use that um, i will say that even a leaf fly even though it's not more anecdotal than it is medical based has become i think more of what consumers tend to be looking for especially when we're looking at the canadian recreational market for the medical market, I think a lot of them as well are getting the data straight from the actual where they're ordering that medicinal cannabis. So for instance, if you're going through FSD Pharma, who's now launched their FV Pharma website, you're probably going to get most of your data through their website. Uh, you probably wouldn't go to a separate thing to get your information and then go back to that ordering platform. And that's one of the issues with how to educate the mass consumer basis, especially the medical community, even for EuroLife brands. And even though they have been one of the leaders in this area, as far as actually getting a significant consumer base to participate in them and for everyone to be paying attention to this, it's not as easy as you see. And again, we have seen companies like a Leaf Fly or other companies that are a little more anecdotal and more based off of consumer review data that have actually picked up even maybe more so than the strictly educational platforms because that's the data that people are more used to accessing, uh, especially when we're considering things like Yelp and all the social media apps in the world today. That type of platform is more accessible and again, more accepted by mass society right now. So it will be a difficult thing to try and educate people differently. The canvas.pet uh, updates and the fact that they're adding more people to that team could put at least them in the in the leader for that because right now again the pet food cbd or pet food cannabis market is becoming a huge area in the world and more and more people are going to be at some point looking for some sort of uh, medical cannabis product for their pets possibly in the future so our last two announcements uh, go back to what i talked about yesterday which is more just upgrading uh, so Consortium, a vertically integrated global provider of premium quality medical cannabis, who is operating under the Fluent brand, announced that it will begin trading on the OTCQB, uh, so under the tickle symbol CNTMP. So they've now started trading on the OTCQB. Uh, we're very pleased to begin trading on the OTCQB venture market less than five months after our initial public offerings on the Canadian Security Exchange, adding valuable visibility and adding liquidity for the benefit of our shareholders. And we're intently focused on executing our growth strategy by expanding our cultivation capacity and dispensary platform in our home state of Florida and establishing our fluent brand of cannabis products as a leader in each market where we choose to comply, to compete. Uh, so it's according consortium now trading on the OTCQB, as well as Cureleaf Holdings, a leading vertically integrated cannabis operator in the U.S., who has now obtained DTC eligibility. 
on the OTCQX. So we're going to see again more of this over time where there's different companies that are going to be upgrading, whether it's to the OTCQB or to off the TSX venture onto the TSX. We're again receiving this DTC eligibility. And you're probably going to see that streamline to get more of that uh, in the coming months, especially if the Safe Banking Act goes through the way it's expected to in the U.S. That will add a lot of different investor money to the market, which will scale up a lot of these companies, getting them onto more advanced markets or into at least uh, more stable uh, trading exchanges over the coming months. And I don't expect that yet. This will slow down anytime soon. If anything, you're going to see uh, more rapid growth of this type of expansion into more stable markets, especially uh, with the Safe Banking Act, as well as a lot of people are waiting for certain FF or FDA regulations to come out on the CBD market. That could also add a little stability and um, a little more investor confidence in the market in the next coming months. That's all for today's podcast. Hope you enjoy the rest of your Wednesday as well. If you've enjoyed listening to our podcast, we now do have the Investor Ideas app, which is a much more streamlined service for listening to the podcast and checking out our news feed, um, especially if you want to look at old podcasts and some of the interviews we've done over time, which I highly recommend. It's a really easy way to actually look through them all. So you can find that on our website. That's all for today's podcast. Podcast is now a certified word trademark on the blockchain through Cognate Incorporated CM certification. InvestorIdeas.com podcasts are also available on iTunes, Spotify, Google Play Music, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, Spreaker, and TuneIn. If you'd like to be a guest or sponsor of this podcast, please contact InvestorIdeas.com. Investor Ideas reminds all listeners to read our disclaimers and disclosures on the InvestorIdeas.com website. And this podcast is not an endorsement to buy products or services or securities. Investors are reminded that all investments involve risk and possible loss of investment. Investor Ideas does not condone the use of cannabis except where permissible by law. Our site does not possess, distribute, or sell cannabis products.